right, guys, we are on section 5.3, trigonometric graphs. And the first thing that I'm going to do is, at this point, you are still, now, most of you are probably, if you watch this, you have already done like 6, 1, 6, 2. So you've talked about right triangle trig, and you've at least looked over probably the textbook videos for 5.3. Uh, so this is going to make a little more sense to you here. But we're going to look at the actual graphs of sine and cosine, <clears throat> okay, today. Uh, we've talked about them being trig functions, but just like with linear functions or quadratic functions, they do make a picture, they make a graph. And we're going to start off with our usual, um, so far, what you've used is the unit circle. So I'm going to start off with the unit circle here. And we're going to list some values like we usually do. Of course, I know that when I start right here, this is 1, 0, and this corresponds to 0 and 2 pi, a distance of 0 or 2 pi. So t is 0 around, or it's 2 pi all the way around. Uh, you also know this, of course, now is uh, 0 degrees or 360 degrees, more than likely. But I tell you what, we're going to go ahead and take those off because <clears throat> you've not talked about technically. We don't talk about those till 6 1, so I'm going to refrain from that in case I use this video again. Um, you know that this point, if t travels the distance of pi halves, okay, that gives me the point uh, 0 1. He lies on the unit circle at 0 1. Uh, we know that if he travels halfway around the circle, if t is a distance halfway around the circle, this is pi. And we know this point is negative 1, 0, okay? Um, we know if he travels 3 quarters of the way around, um, this is, uh, what, 3 pi over 2, distance of 3 pi over 2, okay, and that was 0, negative 1, our reference point there is 0, negative 1. Then we went ahead and we pretty much just filled in that first quadrant. So this was pi fourths, and he square root 2 over 2 with square root 2 over 2. Now, here's the deal, guys. If I know pi force, I also then know these values right here. The hard part for you guys is knowing what radian values those are. So, I'm going to count those for you. This is 0 pi over 4. 1 pi over 4 is right here. This is really 2 pi over 4, okay? So, that makes this 3 pi over 4, okay? 4 pi over 4. This will be 5 pi over 4, 6 pi over 4, 7 pi over 4, and of course 8 pi over 4 is 2 pi. Now you can easily go ahead and fill in, based on the quadrant, square root 2 over 2 and square root 2 over 2, and it's just going to change sign depending on what quadrant you're in. So in quadrant 2, your x value or your cosine is going to be negative, square root 2 over 2. And your sine, your y, is going to stay positive, square root 2 over 2. Okay? Um, in this third quadrant, x will be negative, so cosine is going to be negative, And sine is going to be negative because y is negative. So this gives me negative square root 2 over 2 with negative square root 2 over 2. Okay? <coughs> 7 pi over 4, that's in my fourth quadrant, all right, and it's going to give me, I'm going to take these little asterisks out here because we're not going to need those in a minute. Okay, that's 7 pi over 4. Uh, X is positive here, so that means cosine is going to be square root 2 over 2, and uh, Y is negative, so sine is going to be a negative square root 2 over 2. So you filled those in. Now the next part's pretty easy, and we can get the pi sixths and the pi thirds all going together. Because what you've done is you've taken pi halves, or you've taken 90 degrees, because I'm going to go ahead and say 90 degrees, because most of you have watched 6-1 already. Um, you take 90 degrees, and you bust it into thirds. So these points right here 
our 30 degrees references. So 30 degrees you found is really pi 6. So that's 1 pi over 6. 2 pi over 6 is really pi thirds. Think about it. Okay, now we talked about in, um, we talked about in the unit circle, this makes x is square root 3 over 2 with y is 1 half. Well, that makes a lot more sense now that we've talked about right triangle trig because this is a 30 degree angle and the cosine of a 30 degree angle on a triangle is square root 3 over 2 and the sine of a 30 degree angle on a right triangle is 1 half, is 1 over 2. Okay, and this is my 60 degrees here. Pi thirds is really 60 degrees, and I know that is 1 half comma square root 3 over 2. Most of you already knew that whole first quadrant because we talked about it on unit circle. Okay, but you can now fill in the other parts. So I've got 1 pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, 3 pi over 6, this is going to be 4 pi over 6, which is really 2 pi over 3. Okay, so 4 pi over 6, and then here is 5 pi over 6. Okay, fill those in based on what quadrant they're in. Okay, so here's your third, here's your third. You know this is now going to be what? Y, um, X is negative, so this is negative 1 half with a positive square root 3 over 2, because we're in the second quadrant. Here's your pi 6, here's 5 pi over 6, so that's going to be uh, x is negative again, so negative square root 3 over 2, comma, and your y's are positive, so sine is 1 half. Okay, so let's keep going. We had 1 pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, 3 pi over 6, 4 pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, 6 pi over 6, here is 7 pi over 6, okay, 8 pi over 6 is really 4 pi over 3, okay, let's fill them in, there's a 6 and a 6 right there, okay, well x is negative and y is negative, so this becomes negative square root 3 over 2 with negative 1 half, all right, and then I've got my 4 pi over 3. Okay, that's going to give me what? Uh, X is negative, Y is negative. So now I have negative 1 half with negative square root 3 over 2. All right, so you're doing pretty good here. We've got 1 pi over 6. We had 2 pi over 6. We had 3 pi over 6. We have 4 pi over 6, which was 2 pi over 3. We've got 5 pi over 6. We've got 6 pi over 6. We've got 7 pi over 6. We had 8 pi over 6, which was 4 pi over 3. Then we have 9 pi over 6. Guys, 9 pi over 6 is really 3 pi over 2 when I divide 3 in there. So 9 pi over 6. So this is going to be 10 pi over 6. Well, think about it. 10 pi over 6 is really what? 5 pi over 3. Okay, 10 pi over 6. And then we're going to squeeze in this 11 pi over 6 right here. Okay, and that looks a little messy. Let me fix that. And this is 5 pi over 3. That's what we called it. Okay, so now we're ready. We're in the fourth quadrant. This 5 pi over 3, well, that 1 half is still positive because x is positive, so that means cosine is positive. But my sine's going to be negative with a negative square root of 3 over 2 because that y is negative in the fourth quadrant. And then I've got my 11 pi over 6 here, and that's going to correspond with a square root of 3 over 2 and a negative one half. And so now you have successfully filled in the entire unit circle. Uh, hopefully that makes a little more sense about where everything comes from. Uh, I'll leave those little calculations right there. Uh, and this will also help us, let's see if I can erase that one. Yep. 
This will also help us graph sine and cosine, okay? So what we want to do here is, if I go to look at the graph of sine of x, well, I'm gonna draw a coordinate plane, kinda like I always do, but I'm gonna have to, um, I'm gonna list, my x values are gonna be a little different. I'm going to count by, on my x's, I'm gonna count by pi uh, halves, okay? So this is zero, like always, and here's pi halves, okay? Here's pi, here's three pi over two, and then here's two pi. And I'll even back it up a little bit, and here's a negative pi halves. It's like I'm rotating in reverse, Remember, if we rotate clockwise, it becomes negative and negative pi. I'm going to make this a 1, and I'm going to make this a negative 1. And you're going to see why. So if I go to, I want x to be 0. So that's when t is 0. Well, when t is 0, what is sine? I get 0. Okay, because if I look over here, and I'm going to highlight it for a second. If t is 0, this is where I'm at. I didn't move, I didn't travel a distance. What is sine? That's my y value, which is zero. Okay, that's how I'm getting zero. All right, now my distance x is pi halves. So I go over here to pi halves. Here's pi halves. What is sine? Sine is y, so it is one. So I can say that the sine of pi halves is one, okay? Let's go over to pi. Well, when I go to pi, I go back to y is zero. Guys, here's pi. What's sine of pi? Zero. Okay, whoops. And I'm still using a highlighter. Let's look at three pi over two. What is y? Negative one. Sine is negative one. And then back to two pi, I'm back to zero. Okay, let's think about negative pi halves. What is negative pi halves? Well, that's really down here. It's three pi over two. What is y? Y is negative one. Okay, where is, uh, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to, there we go. Uh, what is negative pi? Well, negative pi is really pi. What is sine there? Hmm, he's zero. All right, so what happens is when I graph this, I get this nice smooth wave curve here. Yeah, my, you know, I don't do great on my, let me do this first and I'll backtrack. Okay. Part of it's because I don't draw those equidistant. Okay, so this is my sine curve. Now, there's an important property that we have with sine. sine. Sine is what we call periodic, and cosine is periodic. The trig functions are all periodic, okay? Sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, and cotangent are all periodic. So when we ask what the period of sine of x is, we go, well, how long does it take to complete one cycle before it starts over? So if you'll notice, we go up, we come down, we come back, and we're gonna actually start again. So the period of a sine function equals two pi. Now that's gonna give us a formula a little later on. Okay, you'll also notice that what is the range of this function? The range goes from negative one to one. So sine of x goes from negative one to one. All its values range from negative one to one. Now that can change depending on if we stretch or compress it, but in general, the parent sine function goes from negative one to one. It has a period of two pi. So now let's look at cosine x. We're gonna do the same thing here, except we're going to list those x values. Okay, so I have one, I have negative one, 
I have pi halves, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. We'll back it up a little bit, do a negative pi halves, and we'll do a negative pi. Okay, now, so I'll go back over here, and at cosine of 0, if t is 0, what is the x value? What is my cosine value there? That's 1. Okay, if we look back up at uh, our unit circle up there, look at your unit circle on your paper. Uh, when I'm at pi halves, cosine is, uh, and I said 1, and I drew 0. Cosine is 1 at 0. But at pi halves, what is cosine? It is 0. Pi, it's at negative 1. 3 pi over 2, I'm back to 0, and 2 pi, I'm back up to 1. Okay? Now, uh, if I go, I'm going to take these. Okay, and cosine looks a little weird like that, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to extend my function here. And there we go. You'll also notice it, just like sine, is going to be periodic. How long does it take to finish one cycle? We'll go back up to pi. So the period of cosine x equals 2 pi. Okay. And then we have um, also cosine x goes from negative 1 to 1, just like sine. You know, this its lowest value is negative 1. Its highest value is 1. Now, we take our properties of transformations and we apply these to these two uh, parent functions pretty much. Because that's what you've got, guys. You've got two parent functions. This is what sine x looks like. This is what cosine x looks like. And now we can add and subtract from the end. We can add and subtract from the inside. We can multiply, divide on the outside. And the transformations all stay the same. Just like if you were using quadratic uh, functions. So, if we have example 1, it says sketch the graph of the function and of course I don't know what kind of calculator you're using at home and I don't know what kind of calculator you're using for chapter pretty much chapter 5 unit 3 exam okay so that means yeah you could just put this in the calculator the only problem that you're going to have if you're using a graphing calculator is if you don't know how to set your window correctly and you don't have it in right ends to graph, okay? So you can get a skewed picture. So I go ahead and show you how to do it by hand. Uh, a says we want to sketch f of x equals 2 plus cosine x. Well, guys, this is the same thing as what? This is really the same as cosine x plus 2. So what have I done? I've added 2 added uh, 2 to the end, which means, what should I do? I should shift the graph of cosine x up to up might help if I use the correct two, up two units. Okay, so I'm going to take cosine x, which all I'm going to graph right now is one period of it. I'm going to start off, I'm going to graph that parent function for you. Um, so I need three, two, one, zero, one, two, three. Actually, I don't need all that, do I? Well, we'll go ahead and... Okay. So, if I start off with my parent function, and I'm going to put my parent function in purple. 
So I've got, oh, I need to label. So one, two, three, because right now labeling your axis becomes very important. This is pi halves. You need to do this every time. Uh, pi, uh, three pi over two, and two pi. Okay, it helps you be able to count in radians. Yeah, I know that sounds silly, but that's not something we usually count in. So it does help you to count in radians correctly. So I know at zero, this is cosine x, this is our parent. So right now in purple, I'm putting cosine x. So zero is one, pi halves is zero, pi is negative one, three pi over two is zero, and two pi is one. Here's my parent. It will do you some good to graph the parent each time so that you know what it looks like. Because you got to get used to knowing those things. Okay, even, I know, you can, you got your little calculator, you can put it in there, but when you sit for Cal 1, they're not going to, if we're back face to face, they're going to know what calculator you're using. They're not going to let you use a graphing calculator. You're going to have to be able to do it by hand. Okay. Now, let's graph cosine x plus 2. So, all I'm doing is shifting this up two units. I'm going to take each dot from my parent, and I'm going to go up two units. So, instead of being at 1, I'm going to be at 3. Instead of being at 0, I'm going to be at 2. And instead of being at negative 1, I'm going to be at 1. Instead of being at 0, I'm back to 2. And then at 1, I'm back to 3. Do not make these pointy. They should be rounded. And that's cosine x plus 2. Not too bad if you know what the parent looks like. Part B says that we want to uh, sketch g of x equals a negative cosine x. Okay, guys, what happens when, okay, so I have a negative, negative in front of the parent. What does that usually do? Okay, that means that we flip or reflect the parent over the x-axis, right? Because think about it. If I have y equals x squared, what do I do? I turn him upside down. Uh, if this is y equals x squared, I know that y equals negative x squared. Then looks like this. You do the same thing except with cosine. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to graph. I don't need as large a graph this time. Um, I'm going to graph, and I'm going to spread these out this time so I have more room. Because I'm not going as high up. Pi halves, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi. Trust me, your life will be easier if you will write those out. Uh, we're going to, once again, in purple, I'm going to put cosine x in purple. So at 0, I'm at 1. At pi halves, I'm at 0. At pi, I'm at negative 1. At 3 pi over 2, I'm at 0. And at 2 pi, I'm at 1. Guys, if you need to look back at your um, unit circle to find those, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, I know what they are, but I've been doing them, I've been drawing them longer than most of you have been alive. So, that's one. Okay, now... I want to graph negative cosine x, so I'm going to reflect each point over the x-axis. So my 0, 1 becomes 0, negative 1. Pi half 0 is going to stay pi half 0. Uh, pi negative 1 will now become pi 1, positive 1. 3 pi over 2, 0 will stay 3 pi over 2, 0. And 2 pi 1 will become 2 pi negative 1. So now, I have this, and that is my uh, negative cosine x. Okay, now we talked a little bit about, okay, it goes from negative 1 to 1. And then I was like, 
that's what the parent does. But you also know that we can cause a vertical stretch or compression, okay? And when we're dealing with um, trig functions, we call this the amplitude, okay? So they'll give us something like y equals a sine of x or y equals a cosine of x. And we say that the absolute value of A is the amplitude. Because, guys, these are wave functions, and they deal with sound, like amps and sound. Okay? Your sound waves are trig functions. Okay? Uh, is what they are. It has to... Ocean waves, if you're looking at how a tide comes in and out, those deal with trig functions. Okay, so if we go back up here and I look at just plain sine and cosine, okay, since that's just one sine of x, I know my amplitude of this parent is 1 on both of them because it's just one sine x and one cosine x. Okay, so as we change A, we change the amplitude. So if I, let's look at example 2. Let's check this out here. Example 2 says, find um, find the amplitude of y equals negative 3 cosine x. And sketch its graph. Okay, well, the amplitude's pretty easy, all right? Um, so, if I'm looking at my amplitude, I'm going to say absolute value of A. I know absolute value of A equals my amplitude. What is A here? Well, guys, this was like Y equals A cosine X. Well, what's A? This is the absolute value of negative 3, so my amplitude is going to equal 3. That wasn't too hard. Okay? That's how high up it's going to go to 3. All right? Uh, that's provided there's nothing else on the end of the function there. Okay? So let's get ready to graph it. Once again, um, we need to... Hold on. 3, 2... One, zero, one, two, three. And I don't really need that chunk. It's going to go all the way down, though. It's going to, I know, I need to switch it or it doesn't erase the whole line. Okay. And I've got pi halves. I have pi. I have three pi over two. And I have two pi. Okay. I know that that negative is going to flip it, and the 3 will stretch it. Okay, so if I have y equals negative 3 cosine x, the negative will flip, or reflect, I should say reflect, over the x-axis, and the 3 will stretch... by 3. Okay? And I'm also going to show you this in table form so I can get you ready to when we're graphing multiple things. Alright? So, I know that we have x is going from, what is my, the, the first thing that I usually do, this is going to take 5 blanks. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. So, this is just normal parent, okay? So, it goes 0, pi halves, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. And like I said, we're doing a t-chart with this because in a minute, you're going to have to use a t-chart to graph it. And when I graph cosine x, I know that 0 is 1, pi halves is 0, pi is negative 1, 3 pi over 2 is 0, and 2 pi is 1, Okay? So, and we'll go ahead and graph the parent. Um, 
So I've got 0 is 1, pi halves is 0, pi is negative 1, 0, and 1. There's my parent. Hey, I did pretty good on that one. Okay, now this time we have um, negative 3 cosine x. Well, all I really have to do, guys, is take my cosine x values, because that's these right here, right? Look, there's cosine x. What's it telling me to do? Multiply them times negative 3. So I multiply all the blue values times a negative 3. So instead of having 0, 1, I now have 0, negative 3. Instead of having pi have 0, well, I still have pi have 0, because 0 times, does everybody see where I'm getting that from? Maybe you don't. Let me write it out because this chart's not long. What I'm really doing is I'm saying negative 3. This is why I shouldn't use colors. Uh, negative 3 times 1 because what's cosine x at 0? Well, it's 1, which gives me negative 3. Okay, then I'm saying negative 3 times 0, which is 0. I'm saying negative 3 times negative 1, which is positive 3. I'm saying negative 3 times 0, which is 0. And then I'm saying negative 3 times 1, which is negative 3. So my new values for negative 3 cosine x, because purple is our parent, and then in black is what I'm looking for, is my answer. So I get 0, negative 3, okay? Then I have pi halves, 0. Then I have pi, 3. Then I have 3 pi over 2, 0. And then I have 2 pi, negative 3. And there is y equals negative 3 cosine x. But all I did was take the values of cosine x at those x's and multiply them times negative 3. And like I said, this is going to help you a lot when uh, we get to this next part. Because in this next part, you can change the period of sine and cosine. You can make it where we finish one cycle maybe in just pi radians and not 2 pi. Okay, we squish it up. It's more of a horizontal stretch and compression when we change the period. Okay, so let's look at that. Changing the period of sine and cosine. Huh. Okay. Um... We will have things like y equals a sine of kx. Or maybe y equals a cosine of kx. Where k is an integer, guys. Uh, more than likely, it's going to be a positive integer. Okay? So, we, have, we know that the absolute value of a, what he does is he defines the amplitude, or it... It defines the amplitude, and then we can find the period of the new function because k affects the period of a function. Uh, we can find the period of the function by saying 2 pi divided by k. Now, this only works right now for sine and cosine because their periods are 2 pi. And uh, later on when we look at tangent, that changes because its period is not 2 uh, 2 pi. The period of tangent is pi. So to find the new period on tangent, that would be pi divided by k. But here, since the period of sine and cosine is 2 pi, the new period will be 2 pi divided by k. Okay? Now, um, we're going to, this is going to get a little tricky here, but we're going to do it step by step and we're going to write some steps. Okay, so example three, we want to find uh, the amplitude and period of each function. Now, that won't be too hard, okay? It's the graphing that's not going to be your friend, but I've, we've got a systematic way to do this, okay? And sketch... 
it's graph. And I did not come by this way from your textbook. I came by it from the 1316 textbook, the Lyle, L-I-A-L. It's in Pearson um, through my lab and mastering. They have a really good uh, set of directions on how to graph, okay? A says y equals 4 cosine of 3x. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to find the amplitude and period because that's what it asks. That's what it asks me. So my amplitude, of course, is going to be the absolute value of 4. No biggie, so it's 4. Okay, we're going to find the period. The period is going to equal 2 pi over k. Remember, this is coming from a cosine of kx. Okay, so what's k? k is 3, so my period is going to be 2 pi over 3. Okay, those are the first two things you are supposed to answer. We got an amplitude, we got a period. Now let's talk about graphing. So the first thing that we do when we graph is on our chart, we're going to have uh, the parent function, okay? So we're going to uh, make a t-chart, pretty much. Make a chart. First two columns. our parent. Okay, so I've got x and it's going to have one, two, three, four, five rows, like always, like it was in the last one, and I've got cosine x. So I'm usually looking at what do I usually graph? I usually graph 0 to 2 pi, right? So I've got 0, I've got pi halves, I've got pi 3 pi over 2 and 2 pi. That's the part that I usually graph. Okay, from 0 to 2 pi, I know that's 1, 0, negative 1, 0, and 1. Okay, now that the first thing that we need to do is we need to, we know the period is not 0 to 2 pi anymore. It is 0 to 2 pi over 3, right? The period is now to 2 pi over 3. So, we're going to have a new x, okay, and it's got to go from 0 to 2 pi over 3. Well, guys, we've got to figure out what that has to count by. Well, what you do is, here we are, we're finding new x's, new x values, okay? So, we uh, first is zero, fifth is uh, the period, period value, okay? Two pi over three. Now, to find the ones in between, we divide the period by four. Divide period by four. So over here, I'm gonna say, and I'm just gonna write it up here, I've got two pi, over 3 divided by 4, which is going to give me 2 pi over 12, which equals pi 6. This is what I count by. What? We'll say we, because y'all are going to count with me. We count by. That's the intervals on my graph. So I go 0, add pi 6, pi 6, then I add another pi 6, so 2 pi over 6, so that's pi thirds. 3 pi over 6 is pi halves. And then 4 pi over 6 is 2 pi over 3. So I went 0. Then I said 0 plus pi 6 gave me pi 6. I said pi 6 plus pi 6 equals 2 pi over 6, which is pi thirds. I said 2 pi over 6 plus pi 6 is 3 pi over 6, which is pi halves. And then I said 3 pi over 6 plus pi 6 is 4 pi over 6, which is 2 pi over 3. 
That's how and you should end where you're supposed to end. Okay, you, you wrote down the beginning and the end, 0 and 2 pi over 3. If your interval is correct, you will end in that last blank of 2 pi over 3. Okay, so that means now cosine of 3x, what you've done is you can actually take cosine of 3x and then just write your cosine of x values. 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 1. But here's why. Because if I have cosine of 3 times 0, that's cosine of 0 now, which is 1. Here I have uh, cosine of 3 times pi 6, which is now cosine of pi halves, which is 0. See how it's working? Then if I had cosine of 3 times pi thirds, that's now cosine of pi, which is negative 1. See, we're getting the right things. Then I've got cosine of 3 times pi halves, which is cosine of 3 pi over 2, which is 0. And then I'm back to cosine of 3 times 2 pi over 3, which is cosine of 2 pi, which is 1. Okay. Now, for the final thing, we've got 4 cosine of 3x. So this was parent, this was parent, okay? And then I do that right there so I can show you what you're going to graph, how you're going to set it up. So now I've got 4 times cosine of 3x. Well, I know what cosine 3x is. It's 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 1. We're going to say 4 times that, so this becomes 4, 0, negative 4, 0, 4. Now, you're going, okay, well, we got this big old chart. What do I graph? Here's your x values. This is how you should set up your x-axis right here. And here's the values you plug in on your y-axis. So, I come down here, and I know I've got to go from 4 to negative 4. Uh, so let's see, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, up. I should have used that one. 4, oh well. It's okay. So on my chart, now be careful. You can still set these up like you usually do with uh, the same width apart, but you're not writing pi halves pi, 3 pi over 2, or 2 pi anymore. Remember, we found our new x's. We have 0, pi 6, pi thirds, pi halves, and 2 pi over 3. Okay? And I'm going to draw them both together in a minute over here on the side so you can see how they compare. But you were just supposed to graph 4 cosine of 3x. So right now, that's what we're graphing is 4 cosine of 3x. Okay? So I've got 0, 4. I have pi 6, 0. I have pi thirds, negative 4. I have pi halves, 0. And I have uh, 2 pi over 3, 4. Okay. Now, and actually, I'll just extend this. This is my uh, new function. So I've got this much space for pi halves. So this is going to be about, ooh, not that far. So let's see. Maybe pi, here's pi, here's 3 pi over 2, and here's 2 pi. Okay, so normally my parent function looks like this. This is 1, 0, negative 1, 0, and 2 pi. Okay, if I graph my parent function on here, it actually looks like this. It doesn't go up this high right here, of course. I think the first one looked better. Okay, this is the parent. This is cosine x. 
This is y equals 4 cosine 3x. It makes sense. The period is only 2 pi over 3. It doesn't even make it all the way to pi. It finishes before it even gets to pi. Okay, guys? And that just takes practice. This is actually part A. Yes, we have that of example 3. So let's look at part B. Of course, it's going to be a sine function. Okay, let's look at part B here. B says y equals negative 2 sine of 1 half x. Okay, so let's find our amplitude. My amplitude is going to equal the absolute value of negative 2, which is 2. And my uh, period is going to equal 2 pi over k, which is 2 pi over 1 half, which now is 4 pi. And there's my first two nice parts. Okay, so let's get ready to make our chart. I know I'm going to need x, and I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so I've got 0, pi halves, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi. And I'm looking at sine x. And what does old sine x usually, how does he usually go? He goes 0, 1, 0, uh, negative 1, 0. Okay? Now, let's look, that's my parent x. Those are the x's I use with my parent. And there's my parent. Okay, these are my new x's. This is what my new graph needs to see. Um, I am going from 0 to 4 pi, right? New x values. Okay, going from 0 to 4 pi. And I told you to, on the intervals, to count by... I'm going to say the period divided by 4, so this is 4 pi over 4, which gives me pi. Okay, so I'm counting by pi. So I've got 0 plus pi is 1 pi, 1 pi plus 1 pi is 2 pi, 2 pi plus 1 pi is 3 pi, and 3 pi plus pi is 4 pi. Okay, so that means that sine of 1 half x, because that's what your new x took care of. This goes 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 0. Now, let's use negative 2 times sine of 1 half x. This is your answer. So 0 times negative 2 is 0. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. 0 times negative 2 is 0. Negative 1 times negative 2 is a positive 2. And 0 times negative 2 is 0. So what am I graphing to start with? My new x is with my new function. Okay. And let's see. We're using... This won't be too bad. Uh, one, two, one, two. Okay. And this time I count by zero, pi. I'm going to spread these out a little bit because I'm going to want to uh, put the parent in there also. So here's pi. One pi, two pi, three pi, four pi. Okay. And I have 0, 0. I now have pi negative 2. I have 2 pi 0. I have 3 pi positive 2. And I have 4 pi 0. And you're going, well, that looks like a normal sine function. But watch, let's put our parent in there and we'll put it in purple. 
So this is, I would usually go 0 pi halves, pi, 3 pi over 2, into 2 pi. Okay, so usually I have 0, 0, and then I have 1, and then I have 0, and then negative 1, and 0. So here is one period of my parent, whereas my new function, it took all the way to 4 pi. It took twice as long, and it stretched it up to 2 and down to negative 2. Okay, so we have talked about changing the amplitude, we've talked about changing the period, and we've also done vertical shifts. Okay, so what are we missing? We're missing horizontal shifts. Okay, um, so let's look at horizontal shifts of sine and cosine functions or curves. Horizontal shifts of sine and cosine. So you know if it's horizontal, it's got to be inside with that x. Guys, over here when we were affecting the period, it was not, it was inside with the x, but wasn't being added or subtracted inside the x. It was being multiplied inside the x, because like we have one half x. We have three x. It's not three plus x, it's three times x. It's one half times x. Okay, so that's affecting the period. When we have a horizontal shift, you add or subtract to the x inside. So, horizontal shifts of, well, sine and cosine will look like y equals a sine k of x minus b. Okay, so, and then we'll also have y equals a cosine of k x minus b. Notice it's minus b. So we've got our amplitude, of course, is the absolute value of a. Our period is going to be 2 pi over k, and then that horizontal shift is going to be b. Of b. Okay, and that's real. What that's going to do is that's going to affect um, when we go to graph what we make our values of x. Okay, and you'll see that. We're fixing to do that. And we're going to make ourselves a little note uh, when setting the new interval. Um, when setting the new interval, if we have a horizontal shift, we want to use, it will go from B to B plus 2 pi over K. Makes sense, guys, because we're no longer starting at zero. We're going to have to add B to that, and then we're going to have to set that uh, period in there also, okay? So, but and that will help us, I promise. Um, let's look at example four. So we can see how that's going to work. We want to find the amplitude. Uh, period and horizontal shift of y equals 3 sine 2 of x minus pi fourths. Okay, and graph one complete period. Okay, graph one complete period. So, I'm going to rewrite that. We're going to leave that little b, b plus 2 pi over k there. 
Uh, this is because I, yes, still have spatial awareness problems. I always will. Sine 2, parentheses, x minus pi over 4. Okay, so I'm going to find the amplitude. Amplitude's easy. Absolute value of 3 gives me 3. Okay, period. Not too difficult there. We've got 2 pi over k. So that's going to give me 2 pi over 2. That turns out nice, which is just pi. So a period of pi. Um, and then horizontal shift. Horizontal shift is going to be uh, pi force. Right? Yes, pi force right, because it's the opposite of what we see. That's the NARC. That's the undercover agent. It's just like with any normal horizontal shift. I do the opposite, so pi force right. Um, let's look at the interval. We can actually go ahead and look at what the interval is going to be here that we're going to graph. It says it's going to be B. Well, here B is pi force because it's the opposite of what's in there, pi force. And then it will be pi force plus your period, which is pi. Okay, well, if I clean that up, that interval I'm going to graph from is pi force to what? Well, that's really um, pi force plus 4 pi over 4, so 5 pi over 4. Okay, so let's get ready to graph. Uh, my normal parent, if I write that, and guys, you don't have to write the parent part. Uh, to me, it helps you learn things easier. Zero, uh, pi halves, pi, three pi over two, two pi. But of course, you don't have to. Zero, one, zero, negative one, zero. Okay. So, that's my parent. Here's where I start with a graph. We've said our interval goes from pi force to 5 pi over 4. Okay. Well, finding the period, or finding what we count by, is still the same. Here's what we count by. I'm going to say, what's the period? Pi divided by, and I'll let me write that out, period divided by 4. So period divided by 4, well, my period here is pi over 4, so I'm counting by pi force. So I've got pi force this time, that's where I started, plus pi force. That gives me 2 pi over 4, which is pi halves. Okay, then I say pi halves plus pi force. Well, guys, that's 2 pi over 4 plus pi over 4 is 3 pi over 4. Okay, then I say 3 pi over 4 plus pi over 4 is 4 pi over 4, which is pi. Okay, and then 4 pi over 4 plus pi over 4, of course, is 5 pi over 4. All right, now, what all did that take care of, okay? Um, that took care of, we we had the shift in there because that was my interval and we had the period change, which was the two. So this right here, you've taken care of this whole chunk right here. Now all I have to do is multiply times, and I'm not even going to draw another column because I'm out of space, is we're multiplying times what? 3. So that stays a 0. This turns into 3. That stays a 0. This turns into negative 3. Okay? And I'm ready to graph it. So I go over here. And this period is what? What's my period here? What do we say it was? Just pi? Okay. So I have, I'm counting by pi force. Well, yes, I'm counting by pi force. So I really have pi force. 
I have pi halves. I have 3 pi over 4. I have pi. And then I have 5 pi over 4. So I went pi halves, pi. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to write uh, 3 pi over 2. And then I've got 2 pi for in a minute when I come back. Right now I'm going to graph 3 times sine of, uh, here's what I'm graphing. There's the last two right here. There's my x's. Here's my y's. So I've got 0. I've got 1, 2, 3 at pi fourths. I have 0. Oh, no, 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 no. What did I do? I can leave that there. I've got pi fourths of 0. Actually, go ahead. You knew that was going to happen. I know. Okay, I've got pi fours is zero, pi halves is three, three pi over four is zero, pi is negative three, uh, five pi over four is zero. So here is one period of my new function. And here's how it relates to the parent. Normally, this is what I have. I have zero, zero, I have pi halves one, I have pi 0, I have 3 pi over 2, negative 1, and I have 2 pi 0. Here is what my parent. Ooh, oh, that was bad, guys. That was bad. All right, there we go. There's my parent. Okay, and that's what my parent usually looks like. With that, last example, example five. And I think this has been a long one, guys. Uh, have I been going an hour? I'm not sure I've been going an hour yet. We'll find out, won't we? Example five, last but not least, we want to find the amplitude period and horizontal shift, of course. Find the amplitude period and horizontal shift of y equals 3 fourths cosine. I better write that on another line. I'm not going to fit all that in there. Uh, y equals 3 fourths cosine of parentheses 2x plus 2 pi over 3. Now I remember why I went and did this one. And graph. One complete period. Okay. Now, there's a little problem with this. Because this is not exactly written as y equals a cosine of k uh, x minus, what do we say, b? Yeah, it's not quite written like we want it to be written, is it? We've got to do what? We've got to pull that 2 out is what we have to do, okay? That 2's got to sit out front. There's got to be, that k's got to be factored out. So, this becomes, what, what I'm saying is, this has to be k parentheses x. It can't be a parentheses 2x, 5x. That x, the coefficient in front of x has to be 1, okay? So, this is going to become y equals 3 fourths cosine. Well, I pull that 2 out. That's not a problem, but what am I really, uh, what do I have plus of? 2 times what will give me 2 pi over 3. Guys, the easiest way to do it is whatever you pull out, multiply your denominator times that. So since I pulled a 2 out, this is going to become 2 pi over 6. Well, what's 2 pi over 6? Because 3 times 2 is 6, guys. What's 2 pi over 6? Well, that's really pi thirds. All right, and that makes sense. Two times pi thirds is two pi over three. Okay, so now it looks nice. This is a 
cosine of k x minus my pencil, Apple pencils having uh, connection issues there. Um, x minus b. Okay, so now we're ready. My amplitude is going to be the absolute value of 3 fourths, which of course is just 3 fourths. I do that, guys, so you don't think the amplitude is negative. I keep trying to remind you there that you have to take the absolute value of it. Okay, the period is going to equal 2 pi over k, which in this case, what is k? 2. So that gives me pi. Okay, and the horizontal shift is going to be b. So it's going to be b, it's going to be pi thirds to the right. Because I have, oh no, we have x plus, sorry, look, it got me. So it's going to be the horizontal shift is a negative pi thirds. So I'm going pi thirds to the left, correct? But that negative right there tells me that I'm going left. Okay, let's set our interval. We know our interval is supposed to be b to what? b um, plus 2 pi over k, b plus the period. Okay, so that's going to give me b is negative pi thirds. I'm going to go from a negative pi thirds to a negative pi thirds plus pi. So my interval is going to go from negative pi thirds to, well, that's negative pi thirds plus 3 pi over 3. So that's 2 pi over 3. Let's see what we're going to count by. How am I going to count that? I know I begin at negative pi thirds. I know I end at 2 pi over 3. I need to take the period, which is pi, and divide it by 4. Ooh, and that's not fun for you because we start at a third and we're counting by a fourth, so we're going to need a common denominator of 12. Okay, so, but we'll, we'll deal with that. Let's think about what old cosine usually looks like. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 0, pi halves, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. And look, you have a recording of me saying this. You can hear me say it over and over again till you hear me in your sleep. Uh, cosine x then is usually 1, 0, um, negative 1, 0, and 1. Okay, so let's talk about my new x's. My new x's start at negative pi thirds, the x's I'm going to graph, and they end at 2 pi over 3, or supposedly I say that, and we're going to count by pi fourths. So I've got negative pi thirds plus pi fourths. So like I said, we've got a common denominator of 12. So that's going to be negative 4 pi over 12 plus 3 pi over 12, which gives me a negative, uh, what, pi twelfths. You're like, this isn't going well. It's all right. So now I have negative pi twelfths plus pi fourths. Well, that's negative pi twelfths plus, what's that? 3 pi over 12. Yep. Which gives me 2 pi over 12, which is really pi six. See, you needed to learn how to add and subtract fractions all those years ago. Uh, that's generally what the problem is with you guys is you don't have fluency quit using your calculator you'll get fluent real fast just like if you need to speak a foreign language if i want to learn to speak spanish the fastest way i'm going to learn if somebody dumps me in the middle of mexico with nobody else that's speaking english i'm going to learn really quick uh pi six plus pi fours equals well okay so we got 12 again this is really two pi over 12 plus 3 pi over 12, which is going to give me 5 pi over 12. And you're looking at me going, there's no way I'm ending on 2 pi over 3. Yes, there is. 5 pi over 12 plus pi 4 so is really 5 pi over 12 
plus 3 pi over 12, which gives me 8 pi over 12, which is really what? 4 goes into both of them. Um, 2 pi. 2 pi over 3, which was where we're supposed to end. Ta-da! Okay, and I have, I know that takes care of my cosine, 2x plus 2 pi over 3. Oh, yes. That's all of that. So, that's 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 1. And then if I say 3 times, 3 fourths times that, I'm going to go back in here and all I've got to do is change these. And that becomes 3 fourths, 0, uh, negative 3 fourths, 0, and 3 fourths. Because all I'm doing is multiplying 1 and negative 1 times 3 fourths. So now I'm ready to graph. Remember, the first thing that I start off graphing are these parts right here. Because those first two columns are my parent. Okay. Let's see. Do I have enough room? Okay. Sure. I'm going to this time. Uh, one fourth, two fourths, three fourths. One. I'm going to spread this out. One, two, three, four. Negative one. Okay. So, then I have... Whew, that's squished up. That's a little bitty squished up, isn't it? Um, we're starting at negative, negative pi thirds. And we have... So, if I've got a negative pi thirds, and then I have... We're going to say that's negative pi thirds. We're going to say that's negative pi twelfths. And we're going to say this is uh, pi sixth. Then we're going to say we have, uh, what's next? What's after pi six? Five pi over twelve? Mm-hmm. And then I have 2 pi over 3. And probably, guys, for this one, I'm going to put it on Desmos for you so I don't butcher it so horribly bad because uh, I feel a butchering coming on. If I have to try to put your parent in there, it's going to get real ugly real fast. I did it over here on my other notes. Okay, and you know, usually this would be, you're going to have, here's pi halves, guys. Okay, yeah, I'm doing it. So normally your parent, if I turn him back purple, is going like this. This, if this is pi halves, and then I have, yeah, I'm going to do it. So there, there's pi halves, here's pi, pi halves, pi, yeah, this is pi halves, pi, 3 pi over 2, I say I didn't butcher it that bad, and 2 pi, okay, so there's pi halves, here, woo, here would be pi is at negative 1, 3 pi over 2 is 0, and 2 pi is up here at 1. So this is going like this. Here's my parent, usually. Okay? I didn't butcher it too bad, and I didn't have to click over there to Disney. And you are done, my peeps. There is 5.3. Make sure you take your unit 3 exam. Some of you already have. Good job.